I'm Mike Sembravivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Last night on Observer Radio, I was going to run down these rosters, but Dave had a better idea, he said. Mm -hmm. I was very confused when he was done. (laughs) And I had the rosters in front of me. So I'm going to do what I believe is the easy way. I'm going to tell you who is on Raw first, and then I will tell you who is on SmackDown. Ready? Yes. All right, Raw. A couple of notes as we go through, but I'll try to keep it simple. Raw has Big E, Bianca Belair, RK Bro, who thankfully are the Raw Tag Team Champions, so we have to worry about a switch. Edge, Rhea Ripley and Nikki Ash, even though they can go wherever they want. Keith Bearcat Lee, Ray and Dominic as a team, even though the storyline is they're going to go their separate ways. Austin Theory, but not Johnny Gargano. Alpha Academy Otis and Chad Gable. Apollo Crews and Commander Aziz, who are a package deal. Do Drop, Drake Maverick, John Morrison, the injured Nia Jax, because they drafted some injured people, but not other injured people. Reggie, R Truth, T Bar, because they broke up T Bar and Mace. <laughs> Remember every couple of weeks they try and give those guys a push? Well, they're broken up now. We've got Zelina Vega. So at least she goes into a new brand, Zero and Zero, unlike the Zero and 19 she was on SmackDown or whatever. Becky Lynch, who is the SmackDown Women's Champion, but she's on Raw. So either her and Charlotte have to both lose their belts to somebody on the other brand, or Becky and Charlotte have to switch belts, in which case each of them has a new reign added to their record. Which, for those of you that are sick of seeing Charlotte win titles, that will help you a little bit because... (laughs) We're adding one to the tally because she went to another show. Bobby Lashley, Seth Rollins, Damian Priest, AJ and Omos, Kevin Owens, which explains his losing streak on SmackDown, the Street Profits, who they almost broke up, but then Mm. sent them as a package to Raw, the Geek of the Week, Finn Balor, that poor bloke, Karrion Cross, Alexa Bliss, Carmella, Gable Steveson, who has been drafted in advance of his debut next year. It's very important to draft him. 33rd or whatever. Dana Brooke, who was absolutely buried on commentary. Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. Jackson Riker, who is now a 24-7 geek. Veer. Everybody else could go as a package deal except Veer. He got split away from Shankly and and uh, what's his name? Shanky and Jinder. Jinder. And quite frankly, I mean, it's probably for the best because he wasn't going anywhere with those two. But I think he could do something as a single. Liv Morgan. Mia Yim, if you remember who she is. Tamina. Tegan Knox, who as I noted, Tegan and Shotzi won three. Count them three non-title matches. Some of you might remember the the bloke here that was all mad at me because I was ranting about how they hadn't got a title shot, and he told me to just let it play out. They're going to get it. They never promised it. They won three non-title matches and have been split up, and they never got a championship match. Shelton and Cedric were back together, even though they literally feuded for like a month. Now they're just friends again. And The Miz, if, as Dave noted, he ever comes back. Now let's look at the Fox SmackDown roster. Do you remember how I was ranting about what's the point of a of a draft? And, you know, everybody had their excuse. And one of the excuses was, well, they each want their own exclusive roster. Well, I will bet that Fox is overjoyed at the roster that they've got. Let's look at it. Roman Reigns, Charlotte Flair, Drew McIntyre, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. From there, Happy Corbin and Madcap Moss. Fab B and the rest of Hit Row. (laughs) Naomi. Jeff Hardy. Aaliyah. Drew Gulak. Aaliyah. Mace. Mansoor. Mustafa Ali. Tony Storm. The Usos. Sasha Banks. Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs. Seamus, Shayna Baszler, Zia Lee, The Viking Raiders, Ricochet, Umberto and Angel Garza, Cesaro, Ridge Holland, 
Sami Zayn, Jinder and Shankly, Natalia, who has been broken up from Tamina, and Shotzi. One of the strongest rosters in the history of this business there on SmackDown right now. Oh, those folks that said I was so I was so foolish to think that it would be better if everybody could work on every show. No, it's much better to have a roster like this for SmackDown on Fox. But there you go, everybody. That is the draft. Any additional thoughts on any of this, Mike? Well, as a thunderstorm rolls into the area here, I am fascinated with the Gable Stevenson thing. Not for anything that's got to do with pro wrestling or this show. Well, it's got something to do with pro wrestling, and that is the fact that he is training to be a pro wrestler at a time where he is going to also be working an entire Big Ten season and then moving on to the NCAAs. It is a... A fascinating little story that I'm sure they are documenting, and if they are not, they should be, because it is, that's very interesting from a sporting point of view and from a physical point of view, a motivation point of view for him, exactly where his head is going to be at, because he is by far, by levels, the dominant guy, but I guess we're going to know about that, at least from the college point of view, come January. As far as the rest of the show, it is what it is. Some people stay on a roster, some don't. A lot of things don't make any sense right now, like what's going to happen with titles, the North American title. I guess maybe we'll find out something about that tonight when it comes to Swerve Scott. Why wasn't Asuka drafted? Why wasn't Bailey drafted? What the hell happened to Elias? Uh, you know, Harry Smith, why is he even employed if you're not? I mean, it's just... You know, it's one of those things. It was another Muppet show last night. It's another show that, as it goes on, it books itself. And I know they don't aim this show at me, and they don't aim it at the traditional wrestling fan. They aim it at the WWE fan, the Stan, the one that has got to argue every point all the time that they're coming to see stars and everything's fine. That's what that show was last night. It was a bunch of stuff that booked itself on the fly. The matches and the wrestlers made the matches themselves, and... That's what we got. And, oh, yeah, there was the draft. Isn't that exciting? You know, and once again, even though it was raw, the best thing on WWE programming by leaps and bounds, the bloodline, Paul Heyman, Roman Reigns, checkmate for almost anything else in wrestling besides what they're doing. I mean, it's awesome. And we only got a little dose of that, which was another frustrating thing where why can't these shows be together so we could see this stuff on both because it would be better for both products, both networks and WWE as a whole, definitely for the fans as a whole. I can tell you that, you know, this Gable Stevenson fellow. I mean, maybe he's going to be awesome. I mean, he could be awesome. Maybe he'll be the next Kurt angle, Olympic gold medalist, great athlete, but we had uh, rock C on the show the other day. And she said that they made her train for two years before she was able to have her first match. And if you've watched her of late, I mean, she's very good. So uh, some people were like, ah, oh, it's a money grab. And other people were like, well, she started training at 14. So maybe well, they just weren't going to let her get in the ring until she was 16. But anyway, yes. the point of this is, <laughs> as, a, as a wrestler who's been around many wrestling schools, what happens is you go to the wrestling school and you start training. And you don't ask, when's my first match? Your first match is going to be when you're ready. It could be three months. It could be six months. It could be a year. It could be two years. When you're ready, that's when you have your first match. It's rare that you begin training and they go, on April 14th, you're going to debut on Raw. Yeah. We're sure you're going to be ready by then. Apparently, they've got a day. Maybe not the specific day, but Dave last night said, yeah. He's earmarked to debut in April. I'm like, how do you know that? How do they know that? I mean, maybe he'll be ready. But I certainly would not earmark a brand new person, who, by the way, is also simultaneously training for the NCAA finals. Well, he's going to hopefully go to the finals, but he's training for the NCAAs and doing pro wrestling private lessons at the same time. Anyway, back in a moment, Observer Live. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.